Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and take it then. Um, hello everybody, welcome to the Chaos DNI and Open Source Working Group. Um, my name is Matt and it's nice to see you today. Um, so we have an attendee list here. Um, the doc is in the chat. I'm gonna repost it for anyone who just came in. Um, so we have an, a list of attendees. Please add your name if you um, if you're here and would like to add your name and maybe a little bit about how you're feeling or an emoji. Um, so first thing on the agenda um, is repo management. Uh, so we have an action item for Matt. We might want to table this because he was going to check on the um, alignment of everything on the repo website and spreadsheet. Uh, I guess we can go back to that one if Matt shows up. Um, with the chaos DEI or DEI reflection, um, do we have, uh, Elizabeth, do we have any updates on that? Um, not really. Um, Justin is, in case anyone missed it, Justin Flory has come on board to help us with this project as our internal liaison with our, our external experts. Um, and I think, uh, you know, we're still in the kind of planning process of trying to sort out what that uh, project is gonna look like overall. I'm um, just putting some thoughts down on paper. So um, yeah, I think maybe the next few weeks, I think probably by, what's today, March 10th, probably by April 1st, we'll have a pretty good update and a pretty good idea of um, what, what, how it's gonna roll out and what, what we're gonna do. So um, yeah, that's the update, I guess. Not much of an update. There's Justin, um, just an update on, if there's an update and it sounds like we're going to get an update by by some point in april <laughs> yeah justin I, we were just talking about the the dei reflection um self-reflection that we're doing for chaos and i i just mentioned that um you know you, obviously you'd come on board and um that probably by april 1st we'll have a better idea of you know like we'll have a, like an actual update i think is would you say that's a fair statement is there anything you want yeah. to add I think, yeah, just that we're in the process of trying to build out the, the folks who will help us with this work and hopefully we'll actually have some some names and some and a better idea of what the next steps are for this assessment by the end of the month. That would be, I think, a good estimate. I'm sorry for running a little bit late. I was on another call. No worries. I was late too, so. <laughs> oh, well. Um, that sounds good. Uh, we're, we're, we're blazing through the minutes here. So if anybody has anything to add to, um, please feel free at any time. Um, even if I'm in the middle of talking because I talk too much. But um, so let's move forward to, um, to badging. We had a submission of a badging graphic that would render better in things like WordPress or other um, situations where they have to be rendered a certain way. Um, we're going to have some new badges. I think it's going to look um, pretty much the same in most cases. Um, we just have to find another way to render the badge. So more updates on that to come. Um, I saw, so I saw in the notes that I was um, that I was put in the spot here to submit to OSS EU. Um, it looks like Nicole is not here, but does anybody have any more information on that? I, I'd like to. Um, I, I think I might be reaching out to Nicole here. I don't know if this is related, but yesterday in the community call, we were talking about some potential um, topics for ESS, uh, ESS, OSSEU. And um, obviously badging came up because that had also been a topic of conversation at the badging outreach meeting. So um, <clears throat> I know Ruth is also interested in participating in that. So I don't know, Ruth, if you want to jump in there, if you're around. Uh, yeah, so um, about this, I, is, is it going to be I think we lost you Ruth for like the conference list to apply to to speak at so is is this for like chaos panel at OSS EU or I, I think this is different. That was kind of my understanding. I could be wrong, but I think that this would be a, its own topic, I think. 
Okay, yeah, I definitely am interested in that. So, uh, or do we, yeah. uh, so from the badging aspect, because um, I'm planning on working with Matt in creating like generic um, generic abstracts to submit at conferences. So how how do we do this for OSS EU? Do we do it separately or who do I actually like work with for this? Um, Ruth, we can talk together about this. Uh, um, I think if you want to help, I think Nicole and I are going to start on it. So I, I can include, uh, we can we can work together as the three of us for that submission. I think Nicole okay. is probably the one that has the most experience with like submitting to conferences. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, I think, I think that sounds like a good time. Um, and I think we should plan on something like, like, like um, Chaos Community said, something that we have, uh, at least 20 minutes to talk about it because we have a lot to say, I think, about the badging project. Um, but we'll take what we can get to. <laughs> and uh, it looks like Amy and Nicole are going to volunteer as your viewers. Uh, I'm gonna put in an action item to reach out, at, reach out as a badging program. Um, Amy and Nicole, um, so that, that, that um, that means that it'll just be an official reaching out about being a reviewer uh, and, and having them fill out the form or something like that. Though I'm not sure we need them to fill out the form because we know them already. <laughs> but and going, sorry, going back to the open source EU talk. Um, historically, what we've done there is we've um, we've just collaborated on them in Google Docs and used this meeting and other things to get feedback from people. So I think there are a lot of us that have done a lot of talks at open source EU and we can provide provide feedback if you're doing it in a in a Google Doc and I know that I'm sure several of us would be happy to happy to help do the do the reviews and we have some time the the deadline isn't until June so if we start thinking about what we actually want to talk about now we can start putting some putting some thoughts together and we have plenty of time to make it better that sounds great um, I'll put in an action a lazy action item for um, the three of us to put something together in a doc so we can share on it later. Matt, can I use that lazy action item in my usual everyday life? Because I love that actually. <laughs> <laughs> so many things I could just add to lazy action item. I, I love using lazy with things because that means you don't have to do them right away. <laughs> Usually I say deferred, but I, I actually prefer lazy because that just seems more accurate. It's honest. <laughs> it's it honest, from, right. It came from uh, something something quite a different concept, but Georg's idea of lazy consensus that he, I think he got from another project, but um, that, uh, it just, just, I love the word lazy in, in techno. Um, and I'll reach out to Amy and Nicole. Um, I think um, we have a metric idea from Ruth, maybe. Um, do you want to talk about that, Ruth? Yeah, so um, I am um, in the badging meeting we just had, like, a while ago, so I um, talked about an experience I've had with sometimes conferences connecting to platforms where uh, bandwidth was a problem for me. Like um, I couldn't like connect to the platform because my bandwidth was kind of low. So I, as regards budget to project, a metric to you know check if. Uh, conferences, if they have like uh, um, metrics to put in place for persons uh, from uh, countries that you know have bandwidth issue, like Nigeria has like a lot sometimes. The network can be really very crazy and annoying, right? So and it's even worse for even speakers. It's it's both on speakers and attendees, right? So it's even worse for speakers where you are 
giving a talk and unfortunately your your network cuts off or something really happens or your bandwidth is low so um something like uh, a metric to you know check for that it's still i'm still trying to like wrap my head around the idea but it's really something we should you know look into right because uh it, it's really important so i i'm still trying to wrap my head around the idea Maybe there could be something um, around, like, does the conference provide um, like pre-recorded talks so that you could watch them? I mean, it wouldn't be per it wouldn't be awesome because it wouldn't be real time. But um, if you were a speaker, you could pre-record your talk and then send it into them, and then they could just play it, um, and then you could maybe you know be available. I, I, I think we, I've seen this before, you know, obviously where that people are available then for yeah. questions, which is yeah, a little exactly. lower of a bandwidth. Yeah, I think yeah, I, yeah. I had that experience of one GitLab uh, conference that was last year. Yeah, they were, the talks were still like available even after I like, giving live. So even when I have like bandwidth problem, I could catch up. Um, I could catch up with the talk at my own uh, space. Yeah, so. Right, right. Yeah, so I, I think that's a great idea. Um, would it roll into another metric that we have or would this be its own? If, if it could, if there's something similar where it could roll into, that's perfectly fine. So I think this- I think there's another piece to this too, because I, you know, the, it's not just actually doing the talk in the, you know, um, in the tool or whatever, the virtual talks, but it's it's all the time it takes to prepare for it. And I do think that from a from a diversity standpoint, um, people who are people who are women, people who are from underrepresented backgrounds, I think frankly our talks have to be a little better. And we have to, I always feel like I sort of have to justify why I'm there, which nests, you know, I don't know, the the standard standard white dude, white cis dude at a conference might not feel like they they need to do that. So I feel like we have to work even a little bit harder than than some people, which might have an influence on this this metric as well. So I'm hearing like that I was thinking inclusion when we talked about it, right? But that that brings equity into it as well. Like that's really important to that might even be two metrics right there. <laughs> I was just thinking like this is a really interesting one just to think about ways to measure this because um, I feel like there's a lot of different ways that you can go on this. Like even for me, one thing that I've started to see or at least has come up with people that use big blue button is that it has some of those bandwidth options from a, a platform point of view. Like if you have low connection, it'll turn off video for all connections. It'll only do screen shares if someone's sharing a screen so you can at least follow that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, you could also turn off video too. <laughs> I noticed that recently. It's like, I think it would be really cool to maybe even push this on the open source tech side a little bit, like thinking about are the tools that you're using, regardless of whether they're open source or not, are they actually accessible and inclusive for situations where bandwidth is a concern? Um, and maybe just a corollary, like another like implementation detail. I mentioned like I, I was thinking about this too because last year, right when COVID started, I saw um, I don't know if you've heard of the conference RightsCon, but I just, I saw they announced um, they did a connectivity fund last year. So instead of doing travel scholarships, they did funding for applicants who um, wanted like data packages from a, a, a provider that had better coverage or headphones and a microphone, those kinds of things. Like, I think it would be really cool looking at something like that also to be like, well, how, how do you know was that successful? Um, I'm just wondering like, how would you measure something like that? So, I, still thinking on it, but just some things to, that got me thinking about this too, that I thought I'd share. That is a very cool idea. I am in love with that idea. And I think that we, I think that we now have enough to roll all of this kind of into a, um, 
into one metric, I think. Well, maybe it's maybe it's other metrics. One one area, at least, I think, under event. Um, would it be event diversity or would it be event access? What do we think? It's a tough one. <laughs> Honestly, events are so um, so much kind of their own thing that I feel like we could almost renamed event diversity to event because there's so much more than diversity in the event diversity section right now we could almost think about renaming it event dei event dni something in that space uh and then and not to just fit this in but because we have so much more than diversity in there Yeah, and I also think this is just an interesting dynamic too, as we get more into the virtual side of things, moving away from the, the in-person. I just think this is just gonna, like maybe since when we first started this spreadsheet with the DNI tab, you know, event diversity made sense, but you know, lots happened since the first edit on the spreadsheet. So maybe it's time just to update our, our titles. There. But I think this is a great metric, and I just think it's one that's very timely too. So I'm all I'm all for like if we want to set up like a Google Doc and collaboratively edit on this, like in the next meeting, I think that would be awesome. I'd love to do that. Yeah, me too. Do we want to take an action item for the, the Google Docking, or <laughs> I'm giving it to to either lazy action. <laughs> Ruth, do you want to take it, or maybe Justin? Yeah, so um, what, what would the metric name be, like a tag name? That's, that's not my issue. Well, since we have a precedent of changing names a lot here, you could just go with event bandwidth or a bandwidth connectivity or something for now, and we'll change it six times later. <laughs> <laughs> OK, that's right. So I'll uh, create a Google Doc now. Ruth, do you know where the template is? I can find it if you don't. Uh, please help me <laughs> find it. I like bandwidth inclusion. Well, that's probably because I came up with it just now. <laughs> um, Sounds good. <laughs> And we, while you work on that, we have another item about chaos con. It's a good, it's an interesting one. Yeah, I, I added that one just because I was like, oh, this is around the time where normally I would be in Brussels or <laughs> just was wondering if that was something that's even come up anywhere in the chaos circles. We initially, we initially talked about how we wanted to focus more on the blog and the podcast because uh, we didn't necessarily want to create one more virtual event, but that was four or five months into the pandemic. Um, and now that we're a year into the pandemic, um, it might be worth bringing it up again to see if we do want to do some sort of virtual chaos con or whether we want to continue to put more focus on the blog and the podcast. They did do a chaos meetup in um, in Shanghai, I think in December, um, because they're back to actually doing stuff in person. So, um, so that was that that was interesting. So this is kind of a kind of a mini chaos con. I remember this is something that the Sustain Conference had also kicked around for a while of doing like local, more like. And continental country events. Um, that's also an interesting angle to also enables maybe geographic diversity too for places where the main conference doesn't normally get to. But um, it's a good it's a good thought. Yeah, I think it's I think it's particularly important for for areas like like China, for example, where you know it's it's easier for them to have a lot of the discussions in their and you know in their native language and there there are a lot of a lot of things that are different about doing doing work in in China that I think makes it easier to do a, a meetup there, and more beneficial for for the attendees as well. 
but maybe this is something we should talk about in one of the like weekly weekly meetings. I've missed the past few, so I don't know if we've talked about it recently. Is this like a is this the topic for the community meeting that's on Mondays or I forget is that's a newer one. I, I always forget there's like a, a chaos. The, the weekly Tuesday one. Yeah, we can absolutely bring it up. I think the last time we talked about it, it might have been a few weeks ago, but um, you know, I think the general consensus was things are still so up in the air that like it's just really hard to to know. So we, I think at the time we were just do, uh, taking kind of a wait and see attitude. Mm -hmm. So, um, but we, I think we should absolutely kind of keep it on the back burner and keep keep it like bubbling it up to the surface. Um, you know, maybe because at some point we're going to have to make a decision, yes or no, because it does take time to plan that. So we're going to have to kind of decide what we want to do. But um, I think we can bring it up. Let's. What do you all think about bringing it up? Maybe in like April or so, um, just, you know, I think we'll have a better feel for how things are going. I don't know, what do you think? Or should we bring it up now and, and keep it keep it going? I don't think we will have a better feel. We always, I mean, like with the pandemic, we always say we're gonna know in a few months and we don't, um, but we- That's a fair um, point, yeah. <laughs> we, we, have, um, we have also that like, I'm, I'm sure, I've seen conferences where they support the smaller conferences and on the same platform or something like that. Um, but like, so like I know that I don't know if they use Entrado. I didn't really like Entrado to be honest. But but um, but if we could use the same platform as OSSEU or something like that, um, I don't know because we've we've figured back on them physically before, but we haven't done this virtually. So it might even be worth asking the organizers, hey. Um, how do you do this? Because <laughs> not a lot of us have the uh, the virtual um, organization or, or organizing experience with events, you know. Yeah. So the challenge, and this is this has been so this has been my I don't know the drum that I've been beating for the past year. The challenge is that it makes sense to add an extra day to a conference when a whole bunch of people are going there physically in person. When you're adding a day to a virtual conference, um, that is really, really hard to get people to spend an extra day at a virtual conference. So I think the whole concept of like plugging it into the existing events doesn't, for me, it doesn't work for, for the virtual events. But with that said, um, OSS EU is actually still tentatively planned to be an in-person, combined in-person virtual event in Dublin in, what was it, October, September, or something like that. And so I think, yeah. I think if it really does actually physically happen, then it might make sense to have a chaos day that people can then join, join virtually if, if there's enough critical mass to actually go to, to Ireland to do it. The, and therein kind of lies the dilemma you know, if, if they at the last minute say, oh, well, things aren't great, we're just going to do virtual. When well, they've already set up to do virtual, and then we're, you know, I mean, I don't know. We could that still means plan we need on to have it, some but... kind of plan uh, to say, if we, if we have to go virtual, let's push it back a few months and have some virtual planning that goes in that time. I don't know, maybe this is all stuff for the community meeting. <laughs> I just, I can't make it there anymore for the semester at least, so I'm like trying to get this done while we're... <laughs> while we're here. And I think too, I mean, so we've traditionally for, for the chaos cons, we've, we've, you know, had a fairly long sort of CFP process and, and everything because of the, you know, because of the travel that's required. Um, but I think given that a lot of people are still going to be reluctant to travel and there are so many issues, I think that if it really does look like it's going to be an in-person event by end of July, early August, maybe we could pull something together in a shorter time frame. We could do a shorter CFP process. We could do a shorter selection process. People wouldn't have as much time to decide, but realistically, if people are going to OSS EU and they're going to Ireland anyways, um, I think that having a talk at ChaosCon is not necessarily gonna make them more likely to travel to Ireland. So I think the, the travel piece is a little bit, a little bit different. Oh yeah, Justin, you make a good point about the visas and vaccine passports and how that's how that's going to work. And maybe people do need more lead time. I, ugh, 
this is also hard. It's just <laughs> so hard. Yes. Well, good. I figured I'd just I, I'd, I'd poke that that bear early just so <laughs> could see what the, the mood was. But I don't I guess I was also in the feeling that even if it's virtual or not, I would just love a chance to connect with what other folks in chaos are doing. Because I really I really dedicate my time into this working group, but I always loved chaos con because I got the bigger picture and just hearing what other people are doing. So it'd be cool even, you know, in person's great too. We could do that, but even just something virtual, just a a day of chaos. Yeah, was that what Matt said? Um, I don't I, I would show up for a day of chaos. I, yeah. I would, I would we could do that. Even do, we could even do kind of a chaos con light, like make it, you know, two, three hours and do a whole bunch of really short talks, like short lightning talks to get kind of updates on what people are working on across all the different working groups and make it a little bit a little bit easier for people to attend virtually. I think lightning <laughs> talks is the time I absorbed the most content per minute. And I think we have that would be really fun. That sounds like a good idea. Are any of you able to attend the next uh, community meeting on Tuesday? Like I'll be there and I can regurgitate what we've talked about here, but um, it's always helpful for me to have someone else that was part of this conversation there because in case I misrepresent or miss something. What time UTC are the Tuesday community meetings, if you know off the top of your head? They are uh, 11 a.m., uh, but 11 a.m. UTC minus six, but daylight savings time is this weekend. So I actually I have to- 5 p.m. UTC. I think so, because that's, it's, uh, oh, no, because it's, of daylight savings. I actually think it's, um, because Europe hasn't, we won't have changed to daylight savings. So it's, um, it's actually 1600 GMT, I think which is an hour earlier than it normally is because of the daylight savings. I have on my calendar, a big banner across the top two weeks that just says time zone confusion weeks for daylight savings. <laughs> yes, um, yes. And it's, I went through and I, I made sure that I adjusted all my US meetings so that they were at the right time for me for this week. Um, it's chaos. I will be at the next meeting, I will be there for the first 30 minutes and then I have a conflict for the second 30 minutes. Okay, awesome. I'll put it on the agenda that is the first thing to talk about. Justin, I just invited you on Google Calendar to your Gmail. Uh, that should give you the right time. Perfect. Yes, that is perfect. Thanks. And I'm looking forward to once Europe, whether well, they were going to move off of daylight savings this year, but I think now it's pushed another year or two. So it's going to get even more confusing, but hopefully we can get everyone off of it. <laughs> We should just shut everything down for two weeks. Just the whole world, just everyone shut down. Just take some time off, come back in two weeks. It we'll didn't spring. used to be this bad. It was not that many years ago that the US decided to shift daylight savings at a different time than the rest of the world. So it used to be, it didn't used to be a problem. You know, Most places use daylight savings and they all shifted at roughly the same time. I think there are a few outliers, but but most of the countries that I worked with were it wasn't an issue. And this is just, this is just chaos. It's the name of the game. <laughs> name, the name of the game. Do oh. we have anything else on the agenda or was that, was that mostly it for today? Oh, um, I'm supposed to be facilitating. Um, I think that's it, unless we have any burning desires to talk about anything else related to DNI and the chaos working group. Okay, um, sounds like that's it for the day. Thank you everybody for coming by and um, sharing your thoughts. It's nice to have you here. See you next week. Thanks everybody. Thank you all. Bye. Bye, Bye everyone.